united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. Welcome to United with Christ. My name is Edith Sobiak, <clears throat> and I'm here this morning to bring you the Word of God again. And I would like to thank the Live Christian Television for inviting me again this week to speak to you. And I would also like to thank all my friends and family members that are so faithfully supporting me in this and encouraging me and praying for me. And I want to thank you, and I, I appreciate that, and I'd like to open in prayer. Father God, merciful, gracious God, we come before your throne in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father. I praise you and I give you glory and honor, Lord. You are the almighty God. You are the great I am. You are El Shaddai, Father. And I just pray, Lord God, that you will take over this, uh, this uh, message this morning by your Holy Spirit, that you will use me as your mouthpiece, that you will put your words into my mouth, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch all these viewers that are watching out there in TV land, Lord, and that you will open their hearts and open their understanding and their spiritual eyes and ears, Lord God, and speak to their hearts, Father, and let them receive everything that you have for their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord, and I give you all the glory and honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my topic this morning is God, the great I am. And I had prayed last week and I said, Lord, what is it that you would like for me to speak on next week? And he said, God. And I thought, God, <laughs> that's kind of a big subject. So I decided to introduce you to the great God, the almighty God, the great I am. He is I am, because there was no beginning, there is no end. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God has always existed. God is not a created being. He is uncreated. There was never a beginning with God, and there will never be an end with God. God says in Revelation, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God, there is no beginning, there is no end. And God was not created. And God, he is so big. He created the heavens and the earth and the universe with a word. He spoke everything into existence. He spoke the word. That's how majestic God is. That's how powerful he is. God, he is the almighty God, the holy one of Israel, the lion of Judah, the lamb of God. He alone is holy. He alone is just. He says, I am who I am. He is God, the creator of the universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the sovereign. He is the holy one. He is glorious. He is everything. God is the creator. God is omnipotence. He is all powerful. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He is just. He is invisible. He is love. He is so holy. The angels are crying out, holy, holy. The elders around the throne, they worship him day and night, crying, holy, holy, holy. God is holy. God wants to be worshipped. God is merciful and gracious. And he is our savior. 
He is our Savior. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is God. He is the Almighty God. God is so wonderful. God is so glorious. God is so beautiful and wise. He is so smart. He, I can't even think of, of everything that God is. He is such a wonderful, wonderful being. And in Isaiah uh, chapter 6, verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah had a vision of God. And he said, Isaiah said, the prophet, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The train is the glory of God who closes himself with light as a garment. God is light. That his light, his supernatural light, his majesty, his royalty, just, just picture God sitting on that throne and all the light radiates from him. God is that light. God is light. And he is royal. He is the king of the universe. He is the creator. Just th picture him in his royal clothes and light radiates from him. And his glory fills the temple. I mean, how majestic is that? God is the divine majesty represented upon a throne high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. This is his divine glory spreading and overflowing his temple. Jesus Christ is the Lord of hosts, King of glory. He is royalty. And we take that so lightly. We, we say, oh, the man upstairs. You know, how disrespectful is that? To refer to God Almighty, to such a wonderful God in such a disrespectful way. In Isaiah, 800 years before Jesus Christ was born, Isaiah the prophet, he prophesied and he said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, if you don't know who Jesus is, this tells you who he is. He is God. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. And they also called him Emmanuel, God with us. When Moses walked up to the mountain and he came to this burning bush, this bush was on fire. It was supernatural fire. It did not consume the bush because it was not an earthly fire. It was God. God manifested himself to Moses in a burning bush. And as Moses approached, God said to him, do not come any closer. Take off the shoes of your feet because the ground which you're standing on is holy. So when he was in the presence of God, he had to take his shoes off. And so Jesus is God. Isaiah is very clear. Exodus 20 verse 5 says, God is talking, he's talking about other gods. He is talking about worshiping other gods. So many people worship other gods beside our God. They worship, they don't want anything to do with Jesus. When I witness to people and I start talking about God, and I say, do you believe in God? Oh, yeah, I believe in God, they say. And I say, well, uh, do you pray to God? And I ask them some questions. Oh, yeah, I do. The moment I mention Jesus Christ, they change the subject. Oh, well, I don't have time, and oh, I got to run, and well, uh, I don't want to talk about Jesus. That makes me uncomfortable. You know, there's a problem with this. There's a big problem with this. So anyway, God in Exodus 20, verse 5, 
he's talking about worshiping other gods. And anytime we worship another deity or somebody else, we are not worshiping God. And according to the Bible, we are not even supposed to pray to anyone except God himself because he is a very jealous God. And this is what he says. Thou shalt not bow down to any other gods, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a je jealous God. God is very jealous. And he says, and if you do that, I will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon your children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If you do not worship God Almighty, which is in heaven, and you worship other gods, God is going to punish you down to the third and fourth generation of your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Please hear me this morning. We are not supposed to play around with God. He is worthy, worthy to be praised, to receive the glory and honor and power for he has created all things, and by his will, all things were created. That is who God is, and that's who we have to realize who he is. We have to reverence God. He alone is holy. God does not share his glory with anyone. Believe me, we are to worship him for who he is. He is a jealous God. Now, jealousy, you say, why would God be jealous? Okay, let me put it this way. God is a loving God, and he loves you with all his heart. He wants your fellowship. He wants you to be totally in love with him. I am totally in love with God, and God is totally in love with us. He loves us so much. Even when we're sinning, he still loves us, and he forgives us if we go to him and say, God, forgive me. But Let's use a little illustration here. You are in love. Say you're a young guy, a young woman. You just met this beautiful person. You're totally in love with that person. So what do you do? Your whole day is consumed. Your thoughts are totally consumed by thinking about this person all day long. You, want, you can't wait till you get off from work so you can be with him or with her because you love each other so much and you talk about him and you think about him. Your first thought in the morning is that person that you're in love with and your last thought is that too. Now that person turns on you and that person walks away from you and meets somebody else and falls in love with somebody else. How do you feel? You become jealous and you become angry and some people become revengeful and you feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get even with him. Now be honest. Be honest with yourself. Isn't that the way we are? And so why if we have been created in God's own image why would we not be jealous? Why would he not be jealous if we walk away from God and we start serving some other God and we pray to this person or we pray to this person or we pray whoever. And so God is jealous. And yes, and he is a, a God of wrath. And when we turn our backs on God, he does not like it. Believe me, he does not like it. And so we need to, we need to be careful that we always stay with our almighty God. And Worship him only, only, for God is running the universe. He is so mighty. He, he, can, he can snuff out our lives with one. He can stop our hearts like that. You know, we have to, we have to really realize who this, guest, this God is that we worship. Just think, he's running the whole universe, which is hard for us to comprehend. And some may think differently. Psalm 103, verse 19 says, His kingdom ruled over all. God rules everything. God rules everybody. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, 
talks about we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day. When our life here on earth is over, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, those who are born again. And if you have been born again, God will judge you. Jesus will judge you on the things that you have done for him, and he will give you rewards. But in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15, the final judgment for all mankind, the great white throne judgment, everyone that has ever lived will be judged and every knee will bow before God. Believe me, you may, not, you may say today, I am never going to bow to this God. I can guarantee you, you will bow to this God because he will be judged. And if you have not served Christ, and if you have not worshipped Christ and received him into your heart and into your life and become born again, you will be condemned. But if you have Jesus in your heart and you received him, you will have everlasting life. Because when our life here on earth comes to an end, don't think it's over. I have heard people say, oh, well, I go as far as the cemetery. Oh, well, it's over. I'm dead. I'm, I'm gone. Well, I have news. It's not gone. That's when your life begins. Your real life begins. This life on earth for us now is short. It's like a vapor. It's like a second of eternity. And why are we here? Be because God made us in his image and he wants us to fellowship with him and he wants us to speak with him and he wants us to worship him and he's teaching us the whole time while we are here and he's taking the bad stuff away from us and he's changing our lives and he's renewing our minds and our hearts and our spirits and God is bringing us to perfection so when we finally close our eyes that last time we can enter into eternity with him and be with him. But if we turn our backs on God and if we walk away from him and if we think that, oh, well, who is God? I have my whole life to live. I don't have time for God. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read the Bible. I don't have time to go to church. Well, you know what? When you stand before him, he will say, Depart from me, for I never knew you. And you will say, but God, I've done this and I've done this and I've done that. And he said, depart from me. I have never known you. So Isaiah 53 talks about our dear Savior, Jesus Christ, his suffering and crucifixion for our sins. John 12, 41 confirms Isaiah 53 saying, these things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and he spake of him. This vision was Christ in Isaiah when he saw his vision in, in sitting on high and lifted up on the throne. And he said this vision was Christ related to his future kingdom when the veil of separation was to be removed and the whole earth was to be filled with his glory. The glory of God revealed to all mankind this is full proof that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is God. In Christ Jesus, God is seated on the throne of grace. And through him, the way into the holiest is laid open. He dwells in every contrite heart. How awesome is our God. How awesome is our God. And the other day, I want to share this with you. I was worshiping and praying for quite a while and the Lord said to me on the, among other things he said worship me worship me I am the almighty God the holy one of Israel the lion of Judah the lamb of God I alone am holy I alone am just I am who I am I am God the creator of the universe the king of kings and the lord of lords I am God, there is no other. I am sovereign, I am holy, I am glorious, I am everything. That's what God said to me. And so I'm asking you this morning, 
why do we not reverence God? Why do we speak in such a disrespectful way of him sometimes? When people get angry, they start cursing. They take the name in, of God in vain. They, they say bad things about God. They blame God. Oh, who is God? What has he ever done for me? He hasn't done anything for me. You know, that is not true. God does everything for you. It says, in the Bible it says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So once you become a child of God and once you turn your life over to God and you trust him with your life and with your family and with your everything you have, God will take care of you and he will lead you and he will guide you and he will take care of all your needs, big and small. You may not see it immediately, but that doesn't mean he doesn't take care of you. So his love for you surpasses everything. And he, we cannot be doubting and unbelieving his word. When he says, this is what I'm going to do, that's what he means. He means, I am going to do this. His word is yea and nay. He, there is no if with God. There is no if with God. Okay, if God said it, that's what he meant. And he does not ever go back on his promises. Good or bad, if he says, if you do this bad, I will curse you. Believe me, if you don't repent, he will curse you. Because God is not a liar. God cannot change whatever he has decreed. And he will not change. He will not change. So this is who God is. And he wants to heal us. He wants to heal our sicknesses and diseases, our hurts and our pains, our emotions, our souls and our spirits. But if we turn back from him and ignore him and not spend time with him, then we, we bind him. And he says, you know, if you want to run your life your way and you want to do it your way, he says, okay, you can do that. Let me just sit here and watch and see how far you get with your own ideas. And you will fall flat on your face. So I'm telling you this morning, God is holy. God is just. He is faithful. He is sovereign. He, he is our healer. He's our deliverer. He heals and delivers. He gives us peace. He gives us strength. He leads us. He guides us by his Holy Spirit. He does everything for us. So please hear me. Reverence God. Reverence him. Worship him. Glorify him. Sing to him. Show him that you are thankful and appreciate him because he is worthy to be praised. He, you can approach him. We don't have to go to a priest anymore in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ became our high priest. We go to Christ Jesus. Every time you go and pray to the Father, you go to Jesus Christ. He is our priest. He is our high priest. He is our intermediate. He is our intercessor. No one else. No one else. Only God. Only Jesus Christ. And I want to point you to Jesus. And this morning, let me pray for you. If you have not received Jesus into your heart, I urge you to receive him this morning. And if you have backslidden, please receive him. Take, uh, re rededicate your life back. Father God, I come to you as a sinner. Please pray this after me. I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Forgive me, Father. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he's God. And I want him to come into my life. I want to receive him as my own Lord and Savior. Please, Lord Jesus, wash me and cleanse me with his blood from all sins, from all unrighteousness. I want to serve you from now on in Jesus' name. I want to be born again. And if you pray that sincerely and with, with all your heart, you are now born again. And I urge you, if you don't want to think about it yet, that's fine. God does not force you. God does not force you. But remember, on Judgment Day, 
remember what he's going to say. He either says, well done, my faithful servant, enter thou into your rest, or he's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Which one, which of those phrases would you like to hear from God? And believe me, you will stand before God one day, like all of us will stand. If you believe in God or not, it doesn't matter. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't understand why God sent so many people to hell. You know what? God doesn't send anybody to hell. You send yourself to hell. Because if you read your Bible and you see what God expects of you and what God tells you to do and what he tells you not to do, and if you totally ignore that and you rebel against his word, then you're sending yourself to hell because you have no excuse. And especially here in the United States, where the gospel is preached on radio and television every day, all day long. You have no more excuse. Everyone that listens to me, I know that you have been exposed to Christianity. You have been exposed to the word of God. So there is no excuse. You have been told. And so I urge you to, to walk with the Lord. And blessed are they who with perched eyes see and with yielding hearts obey the heavenly vision and turn to the King, Jesus, and offer themselves for any service God may require, saying, Here I am, send me. And so God bless you. God bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. And so just go over what I told you this morning. And remember, it is very serious, and it's nothing to play with. It's nothing to ignore. Jesus is real. God is real. And so he's not just a myth. He's not just a story. He's not just a, something that somebody made up. But God is real, and he loves you. And so please, I love you too. And I see you next week. God bless you, every one of you. God bless you. Like all parents, we want the best for our kids. That's why we're grateful for Children's Hospitals. If our kids get hurt or sick, we know they'll get the best care. Put your money where the miracles are. Give to your Children's Miracle Network Hospital.